Assalamu alaikum everybody. I uh, hope you're all well. Hope you're chilling and taking the time. And I really hope that you're sitting and watching this program with your family and that you will uh, replicate these recipes at home, inshallah. Today we are going to do actually a really, really healthy recipe. And we're going to try to fill as many riwayat uh, concerning the ingredients that we are using, inshallah. Today's meal is something that like I've put a lot of effort to make it as healthy as possible and I've tried to make it relevant to our subject because it's pregnancy and of course uh, today nowadays uh, you know like all the media online you find so many sources like how to have a healthy pregnancy in terms of exercising, swimming, I'm eating like healthy food, light food, light fruit, light food, vegetables, fruit and all of that, which is great. But also what is very important is to remember that you like your child besides all of this and more important than all of this or as important as all of this needs food for the soul as well. So, I'm going to start uh, doing this recipe, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and I, while I'm doing it, I'm gonna say the recipes, and I'm gonna share a story with you. That is actually why I really, really wanted to do like a um, pumpkin or butternut squash or something of this family recipe. So uh, this is a big butternut squash. You can use smaller one, but because we have a very big crew here, <laughs> and everybody wants to have a piece, so I chose a big one. Um, Smart <clears throat> move. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I sort of like cut it from where it flares and I s took the seeds out, if the top camera could show it here. I took the seeds out, I washed it properly. I've preheated my oven to 180 degrees. And I'm going to start with, of course, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim again. Um, and I'm going to, yes, sesame oil. I'm going to uh -huh. sort of like put some oil and you know what we want to do? So we sort of want to roast this pumpkin, okay? And then we're going to fill it with so much goodness. It's going to taste great. So I'm going to season it very well with salt and there, pepper. She's, she's got the garlic, that's why. Okay, so the story I wanted to share with you. Okay. This is also my three-year-old son's yeah, favorite bedtime. story, bedtime story. <laughs> it's the story of Prophet Jonah, alayhi salam. That... Um, when Allah tests him and orders the whale, or a so-called whale, we don't know the exact fish, but it's mm. as close, closest to the whale family, orders the whale to come <clears throat> and swallow Prophet Jonah alayhi uh, salam. After mm, 40 days that the Prophet is in the stomach of the whale and it's complete darkness, and the Prophet is very weak, there's no light, there's no proper food that he can eat, he does istighfar, he asks Allah to forgive him, and um, so Allah orders the whale to spit the prophet out to, the sh to a shore. So this is going to go inside the preheated <laughs> oven 180 degrees until it's is almost this the whale? Baked. No, it's not no. a part of a story. It's <laughs> like to be continued. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be half baked, right? We're not going to fully bake it, but we want it to be sort of soft. We don't want it to be that hard either, because uh, once we put the ingredients inside, it's not going to take much time. And then when the prophet, when the whale spits the prophet out, the prophet is very weak. The skin of his body is very, very sensitive. So what does Allah give? as a kind of protection, as a kind of nu nutrition, food, um, for this Prophet Jonah alayhi salam. It's a sort of a pumpkin tree, mm. hal uh, hala. Uh, we don't know exactly <laughs> um, what kind of a, yeah, like... what was the name for it given in the, the Arabic? The Quran? Oh my God, I forgot the word. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, um, I think that was... No, no, it's fine. Yeah. The because I, really you hard. need it to be very hot, hot. so it doesn't stick. So. This is a two medium sized um, uh, quinces that I'm gonna put inside here. Now, quince needs. Wow. That's a good thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> quince needs some cooking, so we're gonna. Uh, that's why I put this first. Yeah, they're very, very Yeah, tough. quince is really hard, I think. This yeah. is really hard texture. Because it's a hard yeah. fruit, exactly. <clears throat> so Allah grows uh, the, a pumpkin branch for Prophet Jonah, alayhi salam, so he can. Uh, drink the juice of the pumpkin and rest in the shade of the leaves of the pumpkin. So I came, ac I came up with a hadith. I came across a hadith from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, who said, um, if if uh, there was a, um, if there was a um, lighter tree 
than that of the pumpkin, Allah would have created that one for my brother Jonah So imagine how much nutrition there is in the pumpkin, um, the mm. actually vegetable, mm. in the seeds, use it in your cookies, use it in your dish. And I read another hadith from Prophet Muhammad who said, eat as... Uh, try to include as much pumpkin in your food for it strengthens the mind and the intelligence. Mm -hmm. So like that, the hadith said, oh, that's the three, brain. three words, exactly. Yeah. So it's really interesting how, um, how much uh, emphasis there has been on this uh, vegetable. So uh, this quince, you have to keep a close eye on it. It has to really get soft because I, like I said, there's not going to be much cooking or baking in the oven after we stuff the mm, um, pumpkin with. So it's gonna do the cooking here. Now, one more thing. Now I'm gonna start with doing the meatballs. You can actually write down this recipe. It's a very good, easy, versatile recipe for uh, meatballs. Now I like my meatballs really nice and juicy. So I'm using two minced onions, two medium sized minced onions and the meat. It's fresh lamb meat, minced lamb. And also, like, so if I'm doing like 200 grams of um, fresh lamb, I'm doing uh, <laughs> like about 80 grams or something of the uh, camel, camel, camel meat. meat. Because like I said, it's very much recommended. It has a very warm nature. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna season this generously with salt and pepper. Okay, now, uh, while you guys were busy, I, I went ahead and crushed my zafran, and then I added it to boiling water. I added boiling water to this. That's so very dark. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's very little it's amount a, yeah, of zafran. Like a pinch, or is it strands by strands? Like five strands, eight strands, something wow. like that, and it turns into this much. That's so really I'm going to be using this all along my food. And in this way, you can actually be really thrifty and save like money by using it this way because like I said the best way to do uh, to use saffron is by crushing it uh, turmeric cinnamon powder uh, onion and I'm going to mince some garlic inside as well and I also added um, salt and pepper so this food is going to be sort of like sweet and sour I actually sweet like it sweet and sour. and sour. This is totally optional. You don't you don't if you don't like sweet and sour you can make it savory completely. Uh, I'm going to add some date syrup or grape syrup to this food with um, norange paste. So what norange is, I don't like I haven't seen it as much in the West as I have in Iran. Yet when it's the season, when it's near Nowruz time, yes. when it's near New Year's, you smell the blossoms of exactly. um, norange. Norange is actually the citrus fruit, right? So with this, dear fish. brothers and sisters, yes. is... Uh, robbe naranj. Rob yep. means oh, like wow. sort of like condensed, condensed, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So we have robbe anar, like condensed pomegranate. Like a paste. Yeah, yeah paste. paste. Exactly. Yeah. Paste. So I'm just going to make small meatballs out of this. The smaller, I think, the smaller the better. Because you're going to have like bite-sized meatballs. Uh, you can use this for um, spaghetti, for different kinds of food. Like if you want, even in Iranian cuisines, in a lot of our food, like if you don't have time to cook the meat, you can actually use like meatballs instead, which I'm a big fan of. And I'm just gonna go ahead, um, mix my, make my meatballs, and I'm gonna let the quince cook, and then I guess that's it for now. This is our meatballs that have been uh, cooking. Uh, I didn't add any oil to the pan. I just made sure that the copper pan was uh, hot enough so that the meatballs wouldn't stick. And now they look beautiful. And I sort of, I didn't want to fry them. I wanted to sort of cook them. And then now when the water is evapor evaporated, it's done both. So it's cooked thoroughly. We don't want to have raw meat, right? Mm -hmm. And one more. It's amazing that you didn't put any oil in. Yeah. And it's still you know the the uh, onions. We use two onions. It gives out mm. a lot of juice, yes. and the water of the onion, the steam mm. of the onion, it really makes it nice. I actually want to do a um, inshallah. We'll be doing a very healthy chicken recipe that mm -hmm. like we're not going to use any water or oil, and it's going to turn out mm. so nice. It's going to. Yes. So this meat is actually like it's cooked in its own broth. So mm -hmm. it's very, very... Um, I had a pig, really. I could see the juice there. And yeah. they were well done. Thank very you. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, so 
Now this is my meatballs. Now what I'm gonna do now, my um, pumpkin is still cooking in the oven. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I wanna show you the quince. Now, uh, in the rawayat we have that if when you're pregnant, if you have quince, um, your child is going to look beautiful. Yep. So this is one part of the rawayat that I do remember. So we also added black, black plums. Like I said, we're going to load the program today with hadiths. Um, so there, there's a hadith that a man came to Imam Qadim alayhi salam, and he saw that there in, in front of the Imam, there is a dish of plum, black plums that is soaked in water. The Imam said, the heat of my body has gone up, and I'm using plums to sort of like bring the heat of my body mm. down. So it's an excellent, that's why I'm saying, you know, the wonderful thing about today's food is that it's so rich in every yes. way. And I hope that it t tastes good as well. And uh, it looks really good too. It looks really appealing, especially yeah, when yeah, you're cutting it. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I had a pick. I said. <laughs> so I'm gonna. Um, so I put the plums inside. My quince has been cooking. Like I said, the quin quince. If you're mm. not cooking it in a pressure cooker, it needs like 45 minutes to one hour, depending on your altitude. Uh, and the weather that you are living in, right? So you just want to make sure that the quince is thoroughly cooked. You don't want crunchy quince under your teeth. I added the saffron to it. Now comes the interesting part. This is completely optional, but um, I don't know. I'd like to say this is my own invention, <laughs> but I'm sure other people have done it before me. I haven't seen it anywhere, but how I like to make um, some foods, <laughs> like for example, if I'm using butternut <laughs> squash, is I like to make it sweet and sour. So we're going to use date syrup and uh, this citrus, um, citrus paste. Yes. Narange, rubbe narange, right? I think this is a really good way of balancing sweet and sour. So what, what I do is I go ahead and I make my <clears throat> stew like I'm making any savory stew. I add my spices, I add my herbs, I add, I add my seasoning, salt, pepper, garlic, whatever. And then also I add um, date syrup or grape syrup mm. and uh, either pomegranate paste or narange paste. I've recently... Um, learned about orange paste and I've like it's really really amazing because it has a very very tangy taste mm -hmm. so you, just a little goes a long way so I'm just gonna taste as it boils as it simmers we're gonna put it on medium heat so it simmers so we get the quince uh, cooked the plums cooked um, and actually all of these tastes get married <laughs> <laughs> married yeah good spouse selection yeah they have exactly done. The, all of the plums them. and the quince and all <laughs> So the squash is cooked. It's nice and soft. I actually uh, added um, some water to the so bottom. So how of long the was pan. that in the oven then? I think two hours? Uh, one one hour. One hour. Two hours. One hour and a half, no. I think. Ten forty. Wow. This was that's a really good. big squash, yeah, though. Yeah, it was good. really so big. One hour forty minutes. Yeah, Sorry. just a little bit of water because I thought it was. I, I saw that it was browning. So this looks wonderful, and I've tried to like season it. I've been trying to taste it and taste it and taste it. I hope my palate has come to my aid to um, reach the right flavor. So. We're gonna fill this. Uh, so these ingredients, they're actually this food on its uh, on its own is a complete meal. And try adding the walnuts. Try it and let us know how you like it. Did you add it today? No, oh, unfortunately. Not, not walnuts, like I said, today I wanted to keep she it nut free. Herself, yes. Uh, you can also uh, use like mm, you don't have to use meat inside this uh, yeah, dish. Yeah, soya. You can use uh, uh, soya or, or tofu? Um, chicken even. Tofu, doesn't tofu? Work, does it? Tofu, tofu I think, wouldn't go with this flavor combina combination. But like I said, if you don't want to make it sweet and savory, you can do it whatever you, however you want it. But the whole idea is that you can stuff the pumpkin and it's going to taste wonderful. And um, you can, if you have leftover pumpkin, besides the fact that you, you can eat it, Later on, you can use it in your cook in your like cookie recipes that require pureed pumpkins. Um, so I'm all in adding all the goodness, the juice and the extract of everything, and it's going to go back in the oven mm. for about 10 minutes to just sort.